Hi everyone, I'm Melissa McDuffie with Crow and Dunleavy's Oklahoma City office and I'm here today to give the weekly employment law update. And this week we are going to focus on legislative efforts that are being made to protect businesses as they open uh, after the shutdown from the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, our office has been closely monitoring um, efforts at the state and federal levels. And right now it appears that our actual state um, legislature is making greater strides in getting to a final product um, of bills that could potentially pass and become laws to protect Oklahoma businesses as they reopen. Now that doesn't mean that the federal government isn't also making strides in that arena. However, um, we've been in touch with some congressional staffers who have let us know that while they anticipate that Congress will pass protections for businesses as they reopen, there's just not anything concrete enough that I can pass along to you right now. But we will continue to closely monitor that and keep you updated as, as those things are making their way through Congress. Now on the state side, as I said, we, the, our state government has actually made some pretty good strides in establishing some potential laws uh, that might protect Oklahoma businesses as you reopen. First, we have Senate, Senate Bill 1947, which is co the COVID-19 Product Protection Act. Now, if that bill passes and becomes law, then it will provide some civil liability immunity for businesses as they begin putting products or as they put products out into the public that relate to COVID-19. So this is gonna be a product liability bill that will protect you if you're manufacturing or distributing or donating products that relate to COVID-19. So a common example of that might be PPE equipment, including masks or gowns or something that's protecting either the public or the workforce um, from contracting COVID-19. That's also gonna include things like ventilators or really anything that you can think of that is made in response to COVID-19. And essentially, that protects businesses who are manufacturing, distributing, or donating those items from liability from people who bring claims saying that there's something wrong with those products or that it harms them in some way. Now, there are exceptions that are not going to protect businesses from liability and that are not going to be included within this act and that's going to be things like intentional conduct where somebody purposefully includes something that harms someone and it's also going to include um, conduct where a business knows that something's wrong with the um, with the product but they're putting it out into the public anyway so that's going to be um, not included within this bill and there could still be some civil liability for those instances now again that's not yet law, but we are continuing to monitor it and we will let you know when that does become a law as long as it makes it through both houses in our state legislature. Now the next bill that's, um, that's currently going through um, our state legislature is Senate Bill 1946. And Senate Bill 1946 deals with exposure to COVID-19 or the potential exposure to COVID-19. So if passed, this will provide also civil liability immunity for businesses, uh, for people who claim that they were injured by or that they were exposed to COVID-19 in your place of business. So if this is passed, this will protect those people from suing you for the potential exposure um, or the exposure to COVID-19 while they're in your business. Now, there are, again, some exceptions to this um, bill as well. And specifically, in order to claim those protections and in order to be, um, to be able to claim that you're immune from liability, you have to have been following um, state or federal regulations or some other state or federal guidance um, on the safety precautions that are necessary. So specifically, an, a presidential executive order or a gubernatorial uh, executive order or um, state or federal regulations regarding, you know, are you supposed to be wearing masks? Are individuals supposed to be scanned for their temperature at that time? So whatever the case may be, you need to be following guidelines that are put in place. Now, again, there are some conflicting guidelines um, and this, this bill actually does address that as long as you are uh, following 
some of the guidelines that are in place by the state or federal government, then you will be protected even if it otherwise conflicts with other guidance that's also being put out by the state or federal government. Again, we're closely monitoring this bill as well, so we will let you know if that does um, make it through and become law. Now, one thing to consider here is Senate Bill 1946 does not relate to workers' compensation claims. So we're gonna still have the same standard of the law that we were operating on before that. So if you have an employee who is exposed or who contracts COVID-19 at your workplace, then probably that's still gonna be considered a workers' compensation claim. Now, again, there are lots of defenses that could come up uh, in that situation, including the fact that you know, an employee would have to prove that they actually did contract COVID-19 there and not somewhere else, which can be fairly difficult to do. Um, now, that being said, um, it also doesn't cover other situations, like, for example, if an employee refuses to come to work and you terminate them, we all know from the various contexts that are already out there that sometimes employees make claims of wrongful termination, whether they are legally supported or not, sometimes those claims get made. This act does actually not address those um, situations. So we don't exactly know how that's gonna pan out, um, but in its current form, it's not addressed. So again, if these things are happening to you, if you have employees that are refusing to turn, return to work and citing that they are afraid of COVID-19 or that they know somebody who had COVID-19 or any of those situations that you feel like could be a potential risk for you, then you should always contact um, Qualified Employment Council. We can walk you through that. All of our attorneys um, have been working diligently on figuring out uh, with, with our clients how to reopen their businesses after the shutdown and how to work that in and bring employees back and deal with those employees who aren't wanting to return. So if you have any of those questions that are specific, please let us know. We're happy to help any of you. And we will continue to provide updates as we get uh, more information about these bills. And we're monitoring them and we'll let you know when they do become law or if there's any changes to them. Thank you.